good to see you all this morning. Pull me down just a little bit, please. Maybe more. Good to see you all on All Saints uh, Sunday here. As we get going, uh, Benny has an announcement. Good morning, everybody. Pastor, I need you for this announcement, please. Just don't get too close to me. Six and a half. Yeah. Be fine. yeah. Um, so, you know, Pastor joined us earlier this year, and um, it's been an irregular year. We didn't get a chance to have a, a proper installment. Um, we haven't had a chance. We, there was a few weeks there where we couldn't have church. Well, he hadn't had a chance to have a quote-unquote normal beginning for pastor. So the month of October was Pastor Appreciation Month, and um, it's November the 1st. So <laughs> to keep current with the uh, irregularity of the year, we're going to honor pastor this morning with, uh, with an appreciation gift. Uh, so the elders and staff got together and we um, accumulated a, a couple things for pastor here. So we just want to tell you, you know, happy. Pastor. Well, thanks. So we, we know that pastor loves a really nice, <laughs> high quality golf shirt. <clears throat> so I uh, went to complete athlete and we were able to get, you know, this beautiful purple golf shirt for pastor. Yeah. So. For are, are there any groans out there? Okay. So now to be outdone, uh, <laughs> we, we we picked up a matching, beautiful black uh, golf shirt, and Pastor, you can pick which uh, heart decal you want. Go down to Complete Athlete; they're ready for you, and you can. Awesome. Um, and you can get the size right too, because okay. we, didn't, we didn't know any of that. And well, one last thing we should, have is... Should a, I get my size now or before I put on the COVID-19? Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I don't know. Discuss it with them. Yeah. And then we have a, a card for you as well. Well, thank you. So, and thank you all so much. Uh, so. You've made me feel very welcome here. And as Benny said, I know it's been weird and um, with everything. And, and, uh, but I've really uh, enjoyed my, my first few months here. And I look forward uh, for many to come. So uh, thank you very much. All right, I uh, don't have too much uh, by way of announcements. Uh, Nancy Hoffman, our organist, uh, you may have heard that uh, her, her uh, adult son died unexpectedly uh, recently. And so uh, she is now with us this morning. The funeral, um, the uh, visitation for that is going to be on Thursday at 10 a.m. And the funeral will be at 11. And so I uh, would encourage you to come and support uh, that family in a very uh, tragic circumstance. So... Um, so I would commend that to you. Uh, what that does mean, though, for our worship uh, is that we don't have an organist this morning, um, which uh, is uh, unfortunate, uh, and uh, this is what it is, though, and so that's what we got. So uh, we do uh, have some uh, videos that we're going to play and sing along with. Uh, I, I jokingly say, call it karaoke church, um, because, uh, and they're, they're each from a different like person who produced it, so some of them our organ music, some are piano music, some of them have the people singing, some of them don't. Uh, so uh, I would just uh, ask for your patience and just roll with it and uh, sing loud, sing proud. Uh, even if it's in an unconventional way, uh, we're still singing praises to the Lord. So um, that's, uh, that'll be a blessing uh, for us. All right. Well, tell you what, let's go ahead and stand and greet each other in whatever way you see is appropriate, and we'll light the candles and sing.
Letters isn't turned on. I'm not sure. Benny might know. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, 
Amen. This way. Today, we are celebrating All Saints Day, on which we give thanks for all the saints who from their labors rest, <clears throat> excuse me, those who have gone before us in the faith. A saint is anyone looked on as holy by God, and we who have faith in Christ here on earth are already declared by God to be his saints. Indeed, he calls us his children. Knowing the eternal end of the story gives us hope in our daily walk through life. We remember now those who have gone on to glory since All Saints Day last year. Orville Winstead. Evelyn Ludwig. Rudy Parma. Ruby Stoker. Barbara Newman. Siegfried Stahl. Jean Schultz. Janet Collins. Joe Hoffman. Now, confident of salvation, let us confess our sins to our loving Heavenly Father. Beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, we are God's children now because of the hope God has poured into us. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God. You knit together your faithful people of all times and places into one holy communion, the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And please be seated for the reading of Scripture. After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. 
and he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. And they shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Uh, the epistle is from 1 John 3. We are already God's children. See what kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the Word does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when He appears, we shall be like Him because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. And please stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. And this is the gospel of the Lord. And please be seated. So in addition to all saints this Sunday, we also have the sending of our quilts and kits uh, that our ladies have been working so hard on uh, over the past number of months. Um, and uh, I'm, a, I'm a numbers guy, so I'll, I'll tell you what they've done. 85 personal care health kits, 85 school kits, 25 quilts to the Salvation Army, 45 quilts to Sulphur Lake Charles, 130 quilts to Lutheran World Relief. So a total of 200 quilts uh, and then that number of kits as well. So uh, we are going to pray over them and bless them uh, as we send them out. Beloved in the Lord, in his great love for us, the eternal God has taken on human flesh and joined himself to his own creation. Heaven and earth are now filled with his glory as he uses the things of this world to bring us his blessing. He has made everything beautiful in its time so that we may behold the beauty of the Lord and inquire in his holy temple. It is fitting then that these quilts and kits be sanctified by word and prayer for use by God's people. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, your Son is the express image of your glory, so that when we behold him, we contemplate your unending mercy. Bless and sanctify these kits and quilts, which are offered in honor of your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Grant them all who behold it, that they may, by your grace, uh, be strengthened in the true faith and worship. Uh, may they worship you with a steadfast heart, uh, may, Lord, these gifts uh, be beneficial for those who receive them. Uh, Lord, we pray that they would be blessed and that they would hear your love proclaimed in the use of these items. Amen. The Lord Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless these items and all who use them. Amen. 
Well, before we sing, uh, I think it'd be appropriate to praise the Lord for the work that the ladies have done in getting these out there and will do this week. Uh, So let's give a hand clap for Jesus for that. All right, we continue with the hymn of the day. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So as we mentioned earlier, today is All Saints Day. It's how we honor those who have come before us in the faith. And it gives us a moment to ask ourselves some important questions. How do we fight the good fight of faith? How do we finish the
the race? How do we keep the faith? And so we're going to look this morning at Matthew chapter 5, the Beatitudes, perhaps the best known passage in the New Testament, and kind of ask some of these questions. Because what Matthew 5 tells us and what the Sermon on the Mount tells us is that in Jesus we have new life. And if we've gotten this new life, how then shall we live? And Matthew 5 through 7 tells us a lot about those things. So today we'll focus mainly on the first 12 verses of Matthew chapter 5, the first part of the Sermon on the Mount, and in it we will see the glory of the Son of Man, we will see the terror of the Son of Man, and we will see the hero of the Son of Man as well. So to see the glory of the Son of Man and to see it in the Sermon on the Mount, uh, I'll just briefly kind of run through what these three chapters of Scripture look like and say... First of all, it talks about our relationship to the world around us, right? That we are to be salt and light in the world in which we live, where we have been placed by God in his divine wisdom. We are to look at our relationship with individuals, right? And Jesus has these number of times where he says, you have heard it said, but I tell you, and it's something different than what had been said previously, We'll see, too, that Jesus says that you need to have mind and body integrity. There's a passage that talks about it. Do not commit adultery off the table. We see a part where Jesus talks about speech integrity, right? Let your yes be yes. Let your no be no. Go forward with that. Jesus talks about how you respond to hostility, that you are to love your enemies, that you are to turn the other cheek, you are to pray for those who persecute you, and in doing so, you show the other person that you want to restore the relationship, even when it seems damaged and beyond repair. Jesus talks about our attitude toward the poor, right? And if you're going to help the poor, don't let the left hand know what the right hand is doing. You need to view them as equals. There needs to be no condescension in the way that you treat other people. Jesus talks about prayer life. He talks about when, when when you're alone, when your thoughts are yours to spend. Show your... When you, when you are in those prayers alone and times alone, it shows your real God, right? What you spend your time on, what you spend your solitude on, what you spend your attentions and affections on. Jesus talks about our relationship with money, right? Where do you spend money effectively? Wherever that is, that's your storehouse. And Jesus calls us to radical generosity in Scripture, Jesus talks about our attitude toward our circumstances when he says, don't worry. Love and trust God so much that you don't worry. It's probably a message a lot of us could use these days for a number of different reasons. Finally, in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus talks about your attitude toward people who are wrong. And Jesus talks about judge not. And we'll talk... We'll talk sometime about what that really means because that gets misused often. But Jesus says, you need to, when you give criticism, you need to give criticism with humility and love. And that's the kind of person that you need to be. Then I I find this kind of funny, uh, but at the end of the Sermon on the Mount, uh, last two verses of chapter seven, and when Jesus finished these sayings, the crowds were astonished at his teaching for he was teaching them as one who had authority not like their scribes, right? So the people hear Jesus preach for three chapters, they get to the end, end of it, and they said, these other guys who have been talking to us, they're a bunch of scrubs. This guy knows what he's talking about. That's the glory of the Sermon on the Mount. Each of those lessons, unique yet unified, and teaching us what this life looks like. So then we get to, that's the glory of the Sermon on the Mount, and the glory of the Son of Man. What's the terror of the Son of Man? Now, some come and say, well, what you guys teach, what you talk about in the church, it's kind of silly, it's kind of old-fashioned, or 
And that's the more benign people, right? People who are harsh will say uh, the things that you teach, the things that you talk about are evil and bigoted and hateful and cruel and anti-science and all of these other things. But what about the Son of Man? Because in this passage, he gives us this wonderful picture of how you should live. What does a life of peace and love look like? And someone could, well, you know, you can reject the rest of that stuff and still be a Christian, right? As long as you believe in the Son of Man. Don't believe in his ethical blueprint. The author of Virginia Owens said this, honest, ignorant ears can finally read it for what it is. Because if you look at what it really says, you will say, God, save me from the son of man. Because this this passage reveals me, right? It condemns me. Right? Blessed are the poor in spirit. Well, I don't always treat people like they're poor in spirit. And I certainly don't always bless them. Here's another way to think about it. Okay? When you read this, it's God saying, this is exactly how I want, or we would say, this is exactly how I want the people around me to be. That's what we would say. And it reveals, right? You know that this is how you should be living. It exposes us. I, I, I definitely am not living like this. I'm definitely not treating other people the way that I should. I fall infinitely short of what Jesus calls me to do here. Who in the world could live like this in the first place? Just, just take it away. I, I, I can't. So if you see the glory and you see the terror, how can we embrace it in any way? How can we have it? How can it help us? And it's only by seeing the hero of the Sermon on the Mount and the hero of the Son of Man. See, because before we can live like that, something has to happen in us. What has to happen in us? The Beatitudes. The Beatitudes don't describe different groups of people. They describe what a Christian is. That's what I read earlier for the gospel. Before you can live the rest of the Son of Man, you have to be the Beatitudes. The Beatitudes describe the kind of person you can be before you can do the things that Jesus tells you to do. You got to be this before you can do this. So a few ideas on this. Number one, you're a Christian if you're poor in spirit. It, say it again. You're a Christian if you are poor in spirit because nobody else is. Not poor, poor in spirit. See, what does it mean? I would submit to you means something along the lines of spiritually bankrupt. See, because everybody else in the world besides Christians will appear before God one day and they'll say, well, I've done some good things and I've done some bad things and I hope my nice list is longer than my naughty list. I've made sacrifices, right? I've, I've, I've helped people. If you want to mix the metaphor a little bit, which you should never do, I've got some money in the bank, Lord. Look at my balance sheet. Only Christians realize, though, that they have no money in the bank spiritually. Spiritually, I am bankrupt. I have nothing. Even my good deeds were done for bad reasons. Right? Only a Christian can say that. When a Christian says that, that shows that you're poor in spirit. By the way, too, just that line, blessed are the poor in spirit. Um, that phrase in and of itself is a real blessing for me. Blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You know what? Good. Because a lot of times I'm poor in spirit and I need to be reminded of that mercy. Second idea here, you're a Christian if you mourn in spirit. That means to repent. That means to acknowledge that you are sinful before a holy God, that you deserve punishment and you rely on his grace and his mercy. That's what we're called into there. Number three, you're meek. What does it mean when you are meek? You are without any power. You are completely dependent. Not, well, I can do some things. 
No, no, no. I, I need absolutely everything. Any good thing that I will have comes only from God. Fourth idea here. What about the person who hungers and thirsts for righteousness? What, what do we mean there? A righteous life, a life of love, a life of absolute integrity, a life of absolute justice, a life of trust, a life of inner peace. Now, those, those are some pretty tall orders, aren't they? How do we react to all of it? Right, And I mentioned it earlier that it, it, it all seems unrealistic and, and it makes me feel bad. How am I going to possibly do any or all of that? And see, when you're a Christian, that convicts you deeply because you're poor in spirit, remember? And you want it and you hunger for it and you thirst for it because it's like you were playing in the mud, in a mud puddle, and now you have seen the ocean. And you say, I, I, I want that. I want that. You know, you don't just need improvement. You know that you need absolute perfect righteousness. And you know that you do not have it. How can we be filled with absolutely perfect righteousness? When Paul writes about it, Paul says, well, I want to be found in him. I, I need a righteousness that is not my own. And here, think about it this way. If you, are, if you have not eaten for three days, not had water in a couple either, if you are literally hungry and thirsty, is your first priority to plant a garden. Right? Take out the seed catalog. I'll, I'll, I'll get some tomatoes in November. See, you ask for intervention, right? I need something now. I need something as a gift. I need food. I need water. You admit that so that you can be filled. How is it possible? We have this word over and over again, blessed, blessed. In the Old Testament, blessed means to be favored and envied. Think like uh, people like King David and Joshua favored. And so we're all going to emulate them. But suddenly here, and it's one of these things, you have heard it said, but now I say that Jesus comes with, this should be the profile of a hero. Poor in spirit. One who hungers. It's a strange hero, right? Poor in spirit, meek, mourning, hungry and thirsty, It's pointing to another hero because before the Beatitudes describe us, they describe him. They describe Jesus, right? Why can we become rich as kings? Because Jesus became poor spiritually and utterly. Why can we be comforted? Well, because he mourned. Remember when Jesus wept? Why can we inherit the earth? Because he became meek like a lamb before his shears is silent. He was stripped of everything for us. How can we be filled? Because on the cross, he said, I thirst. How can we obtain mercy? Because he received no mercy. How can someday we see God? Well, because he was pure and because he was single-minded, because he was laser-focused on destroying the darkness. How can we have peace? Well, because the whole world, including his father, warred against him when he bore our sins on the cross. And when you see that Jesus was poor in spirit for you, that helps you be poor in spirit before God. That makes you poor in spirit toward everybody, and it changes everything. And so we cry out, God, save me through a true understanding of the one the Son of Man shows me. The hero of heroes, the one who is blessed, the one who is favored, Jesus Christ, who became poor and who was mourned, who mourned and who became meek and who became empty so that you could be filled and place your trust in him. 
In Jesus' good name, amen. We continue with the creed and the prayers of the church, followed by our communion liturgy. <clears throat> Just to do a quick reminder of uh, what our distribution uh, looks like uh, here since our return, uh, as it will start with this side of the congregation. Uh, you'll come by a household group down the aisle. Uh, I will give you the bread. The uh, elders will give you the wine uh, and proceed that way. You can bring your kids up if you'd like a blessing. That's awesome. Uh, and then after we finish this side, we will do this side, same procedure down the aisle and then around to the outer aisle uh, for Holy Communion. There is a lot of standing here in this part of our service, uh, so usually we would break it up with the offering or something like that, but uh, not anymore. Uh, so uh, we would encourage you, though, to continue uh, in your giving. Uh, you can leave that off uh, in the plates on your way out or bring it by the church sometime this week. Uh, we can also give online. That stuff's available. Um, and so uh, we would commend that opportunity to you um, as God loves a cheerful giver. All right, let's stand. And together we confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord, grant that we not judge without mercy, but forgive without limit, that we who have known the fullness of your mercy in Christ also manifest a compassionate heart against those who sin against us. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, grant to your church your spirit and power that we be supplied with faithful pastors and church workers to serve us in your name and that we hear and heed the voice of your word and walk in holiness of life. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, grant to those who lead us in this nation and in all the nations of the world wisdom and integrity, that they pursue what is good and right and just according to your word and commands and serve the common good. Deliver us from terror and threat and give your peace to the nations. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, grant to the sick and all who suffer any affliction of body, mind, or soul the blessing of your mercy with forgiveness according to your will and your presence and comfort to sustain them through their day of trouble. Hear us especially on behalf of those for whom our intercessions have been requested here. Lord, we pray for Nancy and Steve Hoffman mourning the, the death of their son, Joe. We pray for Bob Schultz with uh, health issues. We pray for Joel Pent recovering from surgery. We pray for Christy McChristy's parents and niece who have the COVID and her father as well. We pray for Dr. Hopper for strength during chemo. We pray for Maggie Hopper for relief from radiation treatment and has a scan coming up and we're praying Lord for good news there. Uh, Lord, we commend uh, these people to you and those who we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, grant to the homeless, the widowed, the orphaned, and the unemployed your strength to bear up under the weight of their trials and your guidance to bring them uh, to the places where their needs may be answered. Open our hearts to care for them and support them in their need. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, we commend to you our nation uh, as we go to the polls uh, this week. Uh, we ask, Lord, that you would show us your mercy. Lord, that you would give us leaders uh, who will be guided uh, by your word. Uh, Lord, who would, who would seek your will and to carry it out. 
uh, Lord, we ask that you would give uh, us wisdom uh, and give them grace, uh, Lord, as our nation goes forward. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, we uh, pray for our community, our nation, and our world as we deal with pandemic. We ask, Lord, that you would bring healing to those who are afflicted, uh, that you would keep safe and healthy uh, those who are not. Uh, Lord, we pray uh, to and for an end to this scourge uh, and that you would continue to lead us. Lord, in your mercy, into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. In the communion of all your saints gathered into the one body of your Son, you have surrounded us with so great a cloud of witnesses that we, encouraged by their faith and strengthened by their fellowship, run with perseverance the race that is set before us, And together with them, receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name. Hear us now, Lord, as we pray together the prayer that you have given us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the night on which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Please be seated.
Now may the partaking of this holy meal strengthen and preserve you in true faith to life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen. Please stand and receive the benediction of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen.